Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I have the great, great pleasure of chatting with um, Althea McIntyre. We've already been chatting for a while. We did that thing where we started talking before I hit record, and we basically had a full podcast's worth of <laughs> ideas and conversations. So I was like, hold on, let me hit record, and let's just keep this going. So Allow me to reacquaint you uh, with Althea. She is the owner of a Christ-centered leadership development firm that grows your profitable, spirit-led business with a tailored strategy, expert coaching, and God's blueprint. Althea, it's really nice to see you and have you back. I remember really like enjoying our, like I had like a warm, fuzzy thinking about our conversation. I went Mm -hmm. back and listened to our last episode, which was short and sweet. And yeah, it's just, I am as expected. It's very delightful to see you again. So thanks for coming back on. (laughs) <laughs> well, thanks for the invitation. I'm honored. Oh, well, let's let's dive right in. When I did send out that invitation, I asked for if there were any like any topics or concepts or ideas you wanted to talk about. Um, and you actually mentioned that you wanted to talk about the value of sales. Um, and I, one thing I've noticed, too, is you actually capitalized the V in value and the S in sales. And I was like, ooh. Ooh, okay. So it's it's, it's like a chapter heading. So I figured I would <laughs> tee you up to just to start talking about whatever um the the core of what you mean by when when you say the value of sales. Right. Well, it it is a way of looking at sales that often isn't looked at. And hmm. when I'm saying the value of sales is understanding that when you are selling, which I believe is a form of serving, you hmm. are adding value to your clients or customers life you are helping them solve a problem that quite frankly they can't solve on their own and so it's valuable it's a valuable practice it's a valuable skill and so i want people to look at sales differently and see it as an honorable thing that they're doing when they are inviting people, specifically inviting ideal prospects to learn about their offers, knowing that they're adding value in that invitation, when they're sending out sales emails, when they are promoting their programs, packages, uh, book, that they there's a value in what they are doing. Mm-hmm. So that's part of the value of sales because, again, you are helping someone solve a problem quicker, faster, more effectively than they could on their own. I I love this topic of conversation because really, and I'm speaking personally too, for the longest time, sales was kind of a dirty word if that makes sense, where it's like, it just had all these connotations and all this baggage. I think of sales and you think of a salesman, you think of, I don't know, I had all of these preconceived notions, not just about like the external concept, but about what it would look like for me to be doing it. And so I rejected Mm. the notion for quite some time, purely based on just all these like baked in societal preconceived notions about what selling and sales is all about. And the thing that you said right off the top, it just it hit me like a gong. I, I felt the my my heart ring a little bit when you said selling is serving. It's like, that's, first yes. of all, I'm going to write that down because I'm going to make that the title of the episode. And second oh, of great. all, that is a message that I just, I, I don't think we hear nearly often enough that right. selling so is serving. So many times, yes, I talk to people and they'll say, well, you know, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to, uh, for, for, our us fellow Christ-centered entrepreneurs. I don't want to be pimping out Jesus. They've equated selling with all those things when it is in fact, none of those things, right? It is a skill set to help let people know that you have a solution for the problem that they're facing and how you show up in the sales process starts with how you view selling. Hmm. So if you think it's pushy or rude or slimy or off-putting, why in the world would you want to do it? You wouldn't. And so often people ignore it and make everything else a priority when in fact, this is a skill that they need to learn to really unleash and unlock their full sales potential. I often I find myself jokingly thinking about the that movie Field of Dreams 
where it's uh from I don't know if you've it's it's kind of an older like a baseball movie Kevin Costner from the eighties or whatever. But if you build it, they will come. Is that line um, that that kind of resonates back from that movie? And I was like, yeah, but that's a movie, and in life, you do at least have to sell tickets. Like you <laughs> gotta you gotta, have, you gotta have a way to get people in the door, to let them know that the right. game is happening. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That that that's in fact not true. Uh, for those of us who are seasoned entrepreneurs, we know that you can build a website, you can build a storefront, I'll just say that, and they won't necessarily come if they don't even know it exists. Yeah. It could be the best one. It could be, it could, it could be objectively by some, some possible, if there was like just a consortium of everyone who's ever known anything about websites and you build, it's a, it's official. You've built the best one. If, if you don't put it out there, and by putting it out there, I do mean sell it. It's like advertise it, put it out there, open up bridges of connection. No one's gonna know anything about it, regardless of how beautifully well built it is. <laughs> right. And so I know that for some some people love the marketing aspect, right? And so mm -hmm. marketing is letting people know that it exists. It's helping, as I would say, people ring your virtual phone. And then mm. selling comes with, what do you do when you pick up the phone? What is the conversation you're having? What are the questions you're asking? Mm. How are you presenting your offer? How are you helping the person on the other line, the prospect, the lead make a decision? Because that's all selling is doing is you're helping them make a decision. And mm. so yes, you marketing is essential, but do you know what to do when someone sends you a DM? Do you know what to say when someone leaves you a comment um, on one of your posts? Can you recognize a sales opportunity or are you just mm -hmm. ignoring the phone and, and letting it go to voicemail <laughs> and hoping that you don't have to answer it, that they'll just know exactly what to do to uh, purchase your services. Thank you for for calling out that distinction. I think I slipped naturally into marketer speak as a as a as a marketer myself. Yeah. And that's again, that's another thing too that I feel like is really important to shine a light on too is the distinction between marketing and sales. And you 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 um, stated it beautifully, very simply and very beautifully and very accurately with how it's that sort of attraction. And then what do you do with what you've attracted? Being when sales comes in, and I just, I like how you put it in a, in a very tangible way, like. When people come to you with with some intention, we talked a little bit about that before I hit record. What do you do with it? What do you? Yeah. And, and also, I love your focus on what are the questions that you ask. It reminds me quite a bit of what something I talk about with pretty much every coach I ever talk to on this podcast is we always talk about the good questions. What are the yes. good questions that you're asking? Right, and the questions. You know, um, if you want to have better sales conversations and have close more sales, you have to ask better questions. Mm -hmm. There's so much in the questions that you're asking. They so. both unearth information and also open up avenues of communication. When you ask a question, a good question, a good question is essentially a braid of the rope. It's, it's mm. a bridge built out to someone. It strengthens you because a good question, whenever you're asked like a really good question, something that demonstrates a knowledge of who you are, even if it's just a surface knowledge, don't you just like sit up a little bit straighter? Don't you, you feel, you, yes. you feel seen, you feel seen yes. in a way that's yes. very literally like, oh, okay. Right. It just opens things up. You know, I love how you said that because there, there, there is, um, there's a purpose for the questions we ask and it, and the purpose doesn't mean just for, for them to say, yes, like we want to take that off the table. The quality of your questions will reflect the value that you're bringing to a client. You the, you may ask a question that they never actually thought about. They may not have seen their problem or their situation in a certain light. They may not have seen the consequences of them taking a certain action or not taking a certain action. And so that is, you know, the quality of your questions, it's going to help both you and the prospect know if they are a good fit for your services. It will help 
you know, right? Like they'll know like, oh wait, this is a fit for me. It will help them know um, if you can help them or not. And, and for you as the business owner, it's really important as I say, the quality of your questions will help you say, can they actually pick up what I'm going to lay down? Will they actually get the benefit from working, you know, with me? Are they ready to work with me? Maybe they need to do a few things beforehand. So, um, yeah, it, it's about the quality of your questions and it's not, that's why there are certain questions that I, I, I have a, a blueprint, a roadmap actually, uh, mm -hmm. that I provide for people who want to have what I say, one call closes the spirit led way. And it's not about a script because you want to put your attention on the individual. And while there are certain questions to ask in a certain order, it's not just following the script. Mm -hmm. A script can be, it can be a trap and a hindrance as much as it can be a help. A script can be Whoa, a good place to start Oh, you too. just said it. It yeah, can right? be a trap. <laughs> I fall into traps too, where it, it's it sucks the meaning out of what I'm doing because I'm I'm adhering to a script. Now, a script can teach me how to formulate my words and my thoughts and my intentions and my questions. But if I if I stick too closely to it, it'll it'll begin to be the script talking through my mouth and not me talking to another human being trying to connect and see if there's a fit here, a way to serve. And that's man, that is a that is a trap I had to fall into face first more than a few times <laughs> in my learning journey. <laughs> Absolutely, M me myself and I, and also for for the way that I teach sales is Holy Spirit led sales. So it's partnering with Holy Spirit in the sales conversation. And if you're so tied to a script, then you're not allowing yourself to yield to Holy Spirit when he tells you to ask a certain question or not say something. So we definitely want it to inform us, to guide us, to educate us, um, to provide us something that we may not have. And, and the important thing is to focus on what I teach my clients, two people. One is the prospect and most importantly, God, right? And that they're, they're gonna inform you on what to ask. I love it. I love it. There's another word, a cue word that came up when we were when we were talking about questions and talking about the quality of our questions. I was also thinking because you started to talk about fit, which obviously is hugely important if you're, if you're selling as serving as service. And I was thinking about qualifying questions, like the questions that reveal to you, is this is this the right path? Or am, am I leading you down the right path? Are we going down the right path together? As me trying to offer you and serve you in this way by selling you this thing that I think you need. And having qualifying questions, I feel like it's such an important part of the quality, the overall quality of your sales and the quality of the value of your questions, because you want to know, you want to arrive at a knowledge that you're going down the right path together. And you always want to make sure that you both are on that same page to avoid ever letting yourself slip down that sort of slimy, slick salesman road that you you do want to avoid. That. You can become that kind of person throughout all manner of interactions, not just sales. And it's good to have that awareness to serve your intention to serve or to serve your intention to serve. <laughs> How many more times can I say serve? But yeah, I was thinking about those qualifying questions that help you to evaluate the fit as you're figuring out whether or not someone is right for you and you're right for them, whatever it is you happen to be selling. That's so true. And, and, you know, we are, we should always be asking qualifying questions even before we get on the phone. You know, hmm. the qualifying cl questions are going to draw our ideal clients to us and repel our non-ideal clients to us. And, and we really hmm. want to ask those qualifying questions again, not only for the individual, but for ourselves. Because we don't want to be so tied to, let's say, a sales goal that we, um, you know, say yes to working with a client who is non-ideal. And we find that, you know, perhaps they don't respect our boundaries. Perhaps they don't do the work that's necessary. Um, mm -hmm. And so then then we are working harder than we need to. And it can also have a, a, a hit on our confidence. I can mm -hmm. definitely have a hit on our energy level and um, just leave for a bad experience all along the road. I remember speaking to someone who did not ask good qualifying questions and would engage in these uh, 
in client engagements and then find themselves where they were the client act as if they were an employee and they got more embedded in doing work that they didn't want to do because they never set boundaries up front. They didn't ask the qualifying questions. They get that got so tied to, you know, getting the client and, and getting the sale. And then it would end up eventually with a severed relationship. Hmm. That serving happens. no one. Yeah. Serving, serving, no, serving one. no one. Yeah. Right. It's serving it's really, no one. It's, it's tough to stay aware of that too, because you you do you can get very easily caught up in in arriving, in meeting a quota, in satisfying um, a standard. Uh, but sometimes, if you with if you too if you're too hyper focused on a quota or anything like it, you can miss the unseen costs of a bad fit, like in time, in energy, both for your client and for you. And it's it's important to establish those boundaries. I love that you called out boundaries early because that's boundaries are often, it's often thought of as something that restricts or limits, but boundaries are really what allows you to serve the most and expand your opportunities in the, in the best possible way. And so I think it's, it's so important to as early as possible, as early as is reasonable to establish those boundaries because those boundaries are going to serve both of you. Absolutely. You know, Kevin, I was reflecting on last year and I found myself where I, as someone who is, is naturally driven and naturally ambitious, I found myself um, compromising my own values where yeah. I would be in sale. And, and this is like reflecting back and there was signs that this was not an ideal fit, but I was I'm just, I mean, we're kind of trying to force something that wasn't going to happen. Hmm. And, you know, cause there's all these little different signs specifically, cause I sp work with high level clients, high ticket clients and, and ignoring those signs because of, you know, the excitement of potential, like, oh my God, I, I would love working with this person because I can really see how I can help them grow. But there was signs along the way. And so once, you know, one sign is just the behavior in which a prospect will take action to learn about your offer. I don't know if you mm -hmm. experience this with podcast guests, like, you know, the, 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 um, you know, the time, right. So, so they're inquire about your services. You invite them to a sales call. Um, and I believe you should qualify every, person before they even have a call. So you send it out. And what I've found with my ideal clients, they respond right away. There isn't like 10 weeks or three weeks or, you know, you know, 10 months before they make, you know, say, go from, I'm interested in learning about your services and then scheduling a call. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the, these are little signs that I can say last year I ignored and so, or being late to have the conversation, that's a really big sign or even how they fill out the questions on the form. These are, these are, if you're wondering, what are some of the signs? These are some of the signs that you should be paying attention to, you know, did they sign up quickly after inquiring about your services? Did they provide detail in, in, in their questions? Or was it just really, you know, one word answers? Were they late to the meeting? Those are all <laughs> tale cell signs. And so I found myself having conversations with people who are like, when we get to a point, they're like, oh, I absolutely want to hire you, but not right now. When, if I looked at all of those signs compared to what I know about my ideal client was, those were signs that we were not a right fit. Mm -hmm. And that those were signs that I didn't need to, um, follow up in the way that I followed up. So yes, you're right. You can find yourself sometimes, um, ignoring your own boundaries that you have in place and ignoring your own process. And so it happens to the best of, and I just want to be really transparent. Like, you know, I found my, as I was reflecting on it from last year, like I found myself in that situation. And this year I want to be more intentional hmm. and more honest to myself and actually own my value in an 
even greater way. Because when you own your value, you won't accept certain behavior. Mm. Mm. So I, I, yeah. yep. that, was nope, all, you... that was, you know, I, I really wanted to share <laughs> that. Um, yeah. So that people know, listen, you're not alone if you found yourself experiencing that. When you said, I know, like, why did I, I knew this was not a right fit. Like it, you know, that there were some telltale signs, but yet still I, you know, spent time and energy and money following up with, with someone that I knew didn't demonstrate what an ideal client is for me. There's a, and honestly, this, this, this conversation applies to so many aspects of life beyond sales, because I often find myself, I've learned later in life, <laughs> I had to make some mistakes here, but I've learned later in my life that when someone shows you who they are, when yes. someone tells you who they are, yes. believe them. Yes. It's not, it's not an exercise in judgment or prejudgment, but the signs can be there, especially when you've set up your process correctly and given people all these opportunities to demonstrate whether or not they have the values you're looking for, whether or not they have the interest and intention that will match your own. And yes. again, it's not just about saying like worth it, not worth it. It's like, I want to get as, as soon as possible in our journey together to an understanding of whether or not we're the right fit right now. Not going to say anything I love about it. what might happen later, but I love right it because right it's now, not, yes, hmm. it's not right or wrong. And mm -hmm. I, and I, I love that you said that because I remember, um, someone saying to me, oh, I, I'd love to work with you, you know, but I'm not, I'm not ready yet. And I believe them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to believe them. You know, I'm there's, there's no need to further this conversation because if you don't believe that you're not ready, then you're not ready yet. And yeah. exact, and it's, and because I know for myself, and I think you, you might share the same viewpoint is I like to work with people who make the goals that God has given them a priority. Mm -hmm. And when they are committed to their God-given mission, I don't work well with people who God told them to do something and they're not making it a priority and they're not being committed to that. So yeah. or they're just not ready. There's lots of there's a lots of reasons to be not ready. Procrastination is one of them. Fear is one of them. Uh there are lots of personal reasons, yes, significant illness, a death in the family. There's all sorts of, like life happens. Right. And being attentive to one's readiness, both my own and the readiness of those that I seek to serve. It really is. It's something I didn't realize how important it was to be attentive in that particular way, to be looking mm. for readiness and to be responsive to it when it's there and also to be responsive to it when it's not. And just to when recognize it's not it. there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Readiness. It, readiness is absolutely key and respecting someone's readiness, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Whatever that is. Man. Yeah. So there's no. So because the one thing is I, as as and. Um, just being mindful of the time is oh, oftentimes yeah. people are like, oh, I don't like to be pushy because they may have been taught that if someone says I'm not ready, you, you push them, you co cajole them and mm -hmm. letting them, you know, letting them believe that they are ready so that you get the sale and mm -hmm. no, let's respect that individual who says I'm not ready there. There's something going on in their life internally, externally, whatever, and that they know that they're not ready to give the commitment that your services need. So a lot of times when people say, I don't want to be pushy and sleazy and slimy and rude is because they have been taught that in sales, ignore the prospect when they say I'm not ready. No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting us both know. Thank you for being honest. Right. Thank you for that, letting us both know. That's a great, that's a perfect response. Right. And, you know, when you are ready, you know where to reach me. Or, you know, would it be okay if I circled back around with you in three months, six months? Would you like that? Exactly. You, just, you put a little note somewhere and then you just boop, forget about right. it. Until exactly. Time comes back. Exactly. <laughs> and that's how you're able to follow up with the lead authentically and effectively. You've asked permission, right? So- whether the permission is you want to, you know, you want to be proactive, which I love being proactive and owning the sales process. I think it's actually a way of really being of service. I particularly like when people 
follow with me because it's like, oh my gosh, thank you. I was so busy. Thank you so much for reminding me. Whoever that is, it might be my dentist. Yeah. You know, yeah. it might be my car person. Oh my God, thank you for reminding me that I need an oil change. Oh, thank you that I forgot to s- schedule my cleaning. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. So whether yeah. you want to go that route or you want to give them the onus because you feel in your spirit, you want to give them the onus either way. Um, it's, it's a it, There again is the value of sales. And you said being mindful of time. I was unsurprisingly, this conversation has just taken off and it's already been, we've been talking for 40 minutes and recording for, for almost 30. This has been an extremely fruitful conversation. I knew this, I knew like we could just start off with the value of sales. I I had complete faith that we would go all sorts of valuable places. And yeah, this has, this has borne tremendous fruit. And I love, I love the light you're shining on this in the way that you're shining, shining it. Because again, it's, it's very easy to, to be afraid of sales or to be or to be dismissive or to be some kind of way about sales and really it's again i'll go right back to what you started with selling is serving Mm. i think that's that that's that that's the that's the tree that's the trunk of the tree that we talked about today that i think i hopefully for the audience i know it did for me bore lots of fruit (laughs) amen good because i i want people to shift the way that they view selling and sales and so that will affect, shift the way that they show up in their sales process um, and on sales calls. So good. Yes, selling yeah. is serving. We did it. I love this. I might have to have you back on again. <laughs> this is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a good conversation. And quite frankly, I don't, I don't hear enough conversations of this type around this subject. Um, I mean, I hear them, but... I don't know. This was a pretty good one. So I might just have to have you back on again and talk some, talk some more <laughs> about, I about would the value of sales. absolutely love it. <laughs> well, thank you for being here today. This has been really, this is my last podcast recording of the day. And it's, it's, it's like, I feel like I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know. It's, it's, it sounds corny, but like, yeah, I feel like I've been, I don't know if you've been seeing me in the zoom window. I've been moving back and forth and shifting my feet and cocking my head up, thinking about stuff. It's just, it's really Thank you for bringing exactly the kind of conversation I love to have into my mm-hmm. life and into my podcast feed today. I mean, I, I I expected as much because I loved our first conversation. So thank you for meeting and exceeding my expectations, which were already pretty high. It's been it's been a delight, a true delight. So I just want to I'll say it again. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Um, because you remember I started the conversation. I was like, no, I need to talk more about sales. God has been saying, I can talk about a lot of things, right? And God mm-hmm. has been saying, you know, you need to have this conversation more. You know, I have been procrastinated on my book. And God's like, no, you need to have this conversation or you need to be talking about sales more. And so mm-hmm. as I, we were looking back on some vi- on videos I did in 2022, and I started I didn't, I stirred away. I mean, I, I talked more about leadership and I talked more about trust, but now it's like, no, I need to go back to sales and really continue to talk about, talk about. So thank you so much. That was the reminder. And thank you for reminding me that I had talked about the value of sales because I, you know, like <laughs> you, you, this is, this is the God wink I needed. <laughs> oh, I like that. The God wink. That's great. I was thinking in my head, I was sticking with the tree analogy and I was like, I looked down and I checked out the roots. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. We're definitely doing this again, but yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, I, I'm glad that this encouraged you to listen and to take action. And hopefully your, your channel will be filled with more sales videos, more sales conversations yes. in 2023. Yes. I'm excited to yes. check that out. Oh, I'll have a link to all your, all your usual places in the show notes. I th- you have a website, your LinkedIn profile. There's a few other links. I think I still have from your last, from your last conversation on the podcast. Those, those are all still good. Yeah, they're all good, you know, and if you just want to have my website, um, LinkedIn and YouTube, that's what we're really focusing on this year. Like I have, you know, all the other, the Facebook and the Instagram, but we're really focusing on LinkedIn and YouTube. So excellent. Excellent. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I'm around. I'd love to have the conversation and please send me an email when it comes out so we can share it with our community. Absolutely. I just, we're, we're big believers. We'll share it on our, on our feeds for all the listeners out there. You'll share it on yours and Yeah. To, to those of you who are who are listening, who are still listening to this this conversation, I hope you are. Um, think more about this. This is important. I mean, in your in your life, in your business, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as someone who seeks to succeed and seeks to serve, this is an important kind of conversation to be having with yourself and with those around you. So, thank you for listening. 
do yourself a favor and connect with Althea. She's clearly you've experienced how great she is on this, how much she has to say and how she's really living it out in all the ways that matter. So just do yourself a favor and find out more about Althea. And I love this. I didn't even know this part was still part of it. Good. They get to see the real me. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I was thinking about clipping it off and I was like, you know what? I kind of like, like this conversation. So I'm just going to spin it back in. <laughs> I like being able Perfect. to demonstrate the, 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 the reality of it reality of it all. I love, I love all aspects of the conversation and you're such a delight and so genuine and so, so sharp and on point and focused on things. So, and you know what, a couple extra minutes of the podcast, all good. All good. <laughs> thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you, Althea. And thank you to the audience. We will be tremendously grateful and just absolutely tickled to talk to you again here very soon. <laughs> okay. 